Hey Crafty Besties, it's your Crafty Bestie Tabby, and I am going to do something different. Well, that doesn't look like journal stuff. That is correct. It's not journal stuff. It is epoxy resin stuff. And it's been a while since I've made anything out of resin, but Christmas is coming, and I saw some adorable Christmas ornaments here and here. And in years past, I've made this for my crafty bestie, George. <laughs> you know, curious George. And this one I made for me. And so I found these coffee cups. You can use these as keychains or ornaments. And this manger scene, which I thought was just beautiful. And the I Love Jesus. And then we still have the plain blank one that we can make. You can put a sticker in it. You can put anything on it. You could just make it just a ball. And it's fine. So I am going to glove up to do resin. Because oh, i got to take my ring off. Yeah. got to take my ring off. Um, you should always protect your hands and your clothes when you do resin. So, trust me when I tell you, if you do resin in it, it will become resin clothes because it does not come out in the wash and it is very, very permanent. So, I have some Crafty Bestie clothes to cover my regular clothes with because I don't want to ruin what I'm wearing. So, yeah, you should always, always, always gloves and make sure you're in a well-ventilated room and just protect yourself when you're doing these crafts. So, I've never used this kind of resin before. I ordered it off Timu. So, it says it's one-to-one. -one. I'm about to find out if it really is or not. I'm going to measure, mix, and then we'll pour. But I thought it would be a fun day to make some something different. Oh, I also have a gnome that I thought I might pour because gnomes are fun. Um, yeah, gnomes are fun. All right, so here goes nothing. And these have squirt bottles, squirt tops on them, which I found much better. I think that's better than pouring anyway. Yes. If it pumps out, we're doing, we're going to do good if it pumps. If it actually comes out. And I'm not going to mix much. Just a little bit to start. Oop, sorry, camera. Camera was too close to the hardener. Well, that one doesn't work. So that stinks. This is not the stage you really have to worry about getting on your clothes, but if you did get it on your clothes, it would still be on your clothes forever and ever and ever. Amen. So I'm going to mix it. And when you mix resin, just know that you may get air bubbles in it and you really don't want the air bubbles in your resin so you try not to mix super big and then you wait and you let the bubbles pop 
And while you let the bubbles pop, you can decide what colors you want to use. I have white, and I have red, and I have brown for the coffee. Because when this is done, I will do the little hearts in red. But coffee's brown, so I'm going to mix up brown, but I'm going to do it in this one. This is not open. So, yeah, you have to open them because they will not come out if they're not open. Thank you, Guggenheim Scissors. This is not a sponsored ad. I just love those scissors. I think they're the best scissors I've ever bought. But my favorite scissors are still Dollar Tree scissors that George got from the Dollar Tree I don't know how many years ago. Um... So now I'm going to pour a little bit of this in here to mix it with this brown color. It's very therapeutic to mix these colors. And I'm not mixing a lot because you don't want to pour a lot at a time because... I learned this when I was pouring resin all the time before. Um, you don't want to pour a lot in these little molds at first because it gets everywhere and it's hard to clean off. So you don't want to have to clean it off the edges. And I am going to move this little nib back a little bit. That gets behind there. But that was just about perfect for that. I don't know if I could have gotten it any closer to perfect. So. That's going to stay there. And I'm going to put a couple more drops. Of the brown in here. Like five I think. Or six is what I used. And I'm going to take the resin, pour the resin on the color. Whoa, too much tabs. Not too fast, not too much. And then we're going to pour, let's see, let's scoot this back so you can see it. I'm going to pour that. Right in here. And I just think that pouring resin is very soothing. Because you can just watch it drip in there. And a little resin flood. Because it will dry where you wherever it lands. So you don't really want to overfill these. I'm just going to put a little more on this side. Resin is expensive too. You don't want to waste it. And if you have it on a surface and it's still wet, it will come up with a baby wipe. And I have this is not an endorsement for Pampers. This is what I got on sale one time. Or somebody gave them to me or something. I don't know. But just wipe it up. And wipe it up immediately. Otherwise you'll have to scrape it up. And it's very hard to scrape up. So there's the first one. Yay! Now, I want to do the... Um, Push that over. I want to do this scene right here. And it is a nativity. And when I pour it uh, the first time, it's going to go in the mold. Then I'm going to turn it over and pour it. And that time, it's going to pour in the little places. 
that are the negative space. So I think I'm going to use yellow for the background color. I'm going to go in here. Yellow. Just however intense you want it. That's how many drops you put in it. Um, that's entirely up to you. And I'm going to do it with my finger and my glove because it's my glove. It's not my finger. And y'all know how I love to use my finger tool. And then you stir it with the color. And we're going to do all this space that's open in yellow. And you can use a pipette to do this piece. I will probably do a pipette to do the negative space that's left when we turn it over after this is cured because these are there's a lot of little nooks and crannies in this one and you want your nooks and crannies not to go over your negative space and you don't want your negative space to go over your nooks and crannies And I'm going to fill that so that there is parts of it. And then when this is cured, we'll turn it over and fill the rest of it. Okay. Now. Don't have enough mixed to do the gnome right now. And I'm for this one. I think I'm just gonna finish it. Finish today. Um, we're gonna do this one with red, and I'm gonna mix the red in the yellow that I've already got mixing, and it'll just make it a lighter color, and that's okay. And we'll have this one, and I'm going to put some glitter in it. Just about that much glitter. And we're going to scrape the rest of the resin in here, because we don't want to waste a drop. You guys, we don't want to waste anything. And yep, I see I put a little piece of glitter in the coffee one. Maybe nobody will notice it too much. Okay, so we're going to just put this in here. And we're going to have a beautiful red with red glitter ornament and then we can put a sticker on the front we can do paint on the front you can cut vinyl on put it on the front um, yeah it is because of resin that I ended up getting a Cricut and I'll tell you I sold my Cricut because it made me say bad words um, I am not into that kind of design. I just, that is not my joy of my life. I don't like to design things. <laughs> I want it designed for me. I want it to be plug and play. And Cricut is not plug and play. Cricut is plug and work and then print and then play. And so, yeah, that was not for me. So, I'm going to show you that you should always clean out 
your vessels that you use every time. Every time you pour resin, clean your buckets. Because if you don't, you will have a big nasty mess and it will bleed into your next project and you will not be happy with your next project. But as I said, protect your hands. Always protect your hands. Always. Because resin is very caustic and it can burn your hands. You don't want your hands to have resin burns. Take a fool's advice. Because I have done that with um, no hand protection thing and gotten resin on my hands. And y'all, it don't tickle. Um, it hurts. So I just highly recommend, because y'all know I'm all about ease of use. Now I'm going to get all the resin out. Sometimes the glitter will stay in there. We can wash this with hot soapy water because it's silicone and the glitter will come out. But clean your tools every time or you're going to have resin on your tools. So this is why I'm cleaning the tools and I'm putting them in a clean bucket because we don't it's just no fun to have resin on their tools because when you go back and then you got resin on your tools and you're like, oh man. So we're going to let this cure. Probably let it cure overnight. Um, put in the comments below if you want me to show you the unmolding. Maybe I'll post that when I do it if you tell me you want it. But I'm excited to see how those coffee cups come out. And we'll do some red in the hearts. I will probably do this one, and I will probably do the um, the gnome when I do the unmolding of these. And one thing about glitter, it does get everywhere, but it is the season. Tis the season <laughs> for glitter. So I'm going to take those in the kitchen, hot soapy water, and we're going to clean those up. I'm also going to wash these too because this is I used those. Um, so I hope that uh, this was fun for you. If you want to see me unmold it, unmold them, put, the, put it in the comments. Tell me. Reach out. And never forget, if you're down or sad, reach out for help. There's nothing wrong with that. And always remember, you matter. You are important. You are enough. And I love you. And I'm going to take this off. And I'll see you in the next video.